Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you haven't seen part one of this series, go ahead and click up on the little eye icon up there. There might be a little video annotation you can click on as well, or this entire video may not make a lot of sense. Welcome back to another video. I'm your host, That One Camera Guy, and this is part two of the video editing machine for 2016. The first thing I wanna kinda of talk about is the fact that I'm not really a computer building expert. I don't build computers for a living. I don't do it every other week. Um, my last computer build was done in 2009, 2010 when they had the Q6600 quad core CPU. I don't even know if it was a top of the line then or not, but uh, that was one of my first builds. What's really great about building a PC is that it's actually really rewarding when it works. I know the first build I ever did, I had issues with it booting up the first time. I had to run back to Micro Center a couple of times to, to exchange parts to make sure that it was actually working. But all in all, the, ex the entire experience of actually taking all these individual components and making something that actually works is really fun. And I hope that this video inspires you to also do the same. I just want to I just want to stress that this isn't a video build guide. You are uh, not going to learn everything as far as how to build a computer from the ground up. I will kind of give you kind of a first person discussion as the video is showing like a time lapse and slowdowns of what I did in the build and some of the hiccups that I had through the process. So don't expect this to be a kind of a, a end all be all guide for building a computer. You can definitely find more of those online and they do a much better job than I do. So without further ado, let's get started. You know, in putting the computer together, the first thing that you need to do is take the motherboard out of this box. So. Uh, you're going to then want to install the CPU into the board first before it actually goes into the case. You don't want to go ahead and install the CPU once it's already in the case. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do that. Um, keep in mind that when you're installing the CPU, there's actually a triangle that you'll see that kind of gives a guideline uh, where you're going to match up the CPU socket, uh, sorry, the, the CPU itself to the socket on the motherboard. So that way you, you can't really mess it up. Now, when you're handling the CPU, obviously don't touch any of the pins with your fingers. Try not to touch, just only hold the actual sides of the CPU to ensure you don't damage it or cause any problems. Another issue, not really an issue, but something you'll find when you're building your computer is when you're having to put the latch on to lock on the CPU, it requires quite a bit of force and, and at times you get kind of concerned because you don't want to break this really expensive component in your entire build. Uh, so there's just something to keep in mind when you are installing the actual CPU is to know that there is gonna be quite a bit of force when you do that. The next thing I did was install the RAM. I thought this part was supposed to be easy, but later on I actually didn't install one of the RAM slot, uh, the RAM cards correctly. And uh, in the video, I actually made a joke saying like, if you can't do this, uh, there's nothing that can help you. And now I feel terrible having said that. When even myself, I, I had the same problem of actually installing the RAM and finding out that there was one card that didn't go in well because I had 24 gigabytes of RAM being read and I was like, well, I have 32 where are the rest of my, uh, where's the rest of my RAM? So that was really concerning for me uh, at first, but I went ahead and figured it out. <laughs> at first, when you're building a computer and you see something like this happen, the first thing that goes to your mind is, uh, do I have to go in and send all these parts back to the manufacturer? And you really don't wanna go through that process or even to the vendor. After all of that, I went ahead and started working on the CPU cooler. Uh, I really should have took more time in actually figuring out the way the fan was going to go into the case because when you install the CPU cooler into the case, you have these little long cables that kind of extend out of the fans and that starts to create some problems because you want to have really good cable management in your system and I, I mean I spent all this money I didn't want the, and also the fact that the case has a, a side panel, which I want everything to look nice. But anyway, I just went ahead and, 
and screwed on the darn uh, fans. And I did think a little bit about the positioning, but I, I was kind of wrong about that. So that's something I would really think about again in the future. I'm sure if I had a much bigger case, it wouldn't be a problem, but the fact that it's a mid tower case, there isn't like a huge amount of space to work with. Once I had the fan set up, I went ahead and then um, installed the stands, these little, little screw stands into the motherboard in the system. I probably, I think I did this, yeah, I still did this part outside of the case. One thing to keep in mind is when you install it, there's multiple screws in your little baggie. So you need to make sure you get the correct ones for your particular motherboard and build. So just keep that in mind to use the correct ones for what you're using. And I didn't need all these other bracket pieces that came with it. I only needed just the CPU cooler, the, the little stands, and then I just mounted it right onto the, uh, the motherboard, the CPU. What I did next, is I wasn't too sure if I was supposed to put the motherboard in first, then the radiator, the you know, the CPU fans, uh, the radiator. But I decided to go ahead and install the radiator in there first because I didn't want anything blocking my way when I mounted it. So that's what I, I ended up doing first. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I oriented the tubing in the right location because you can flip the orientation around so the, the tubing, the, the coolant or whatever they're using, goes in one direction versus the other. And I had to orient it on the right hand side towards the front of the case because I didn't want that tubing to interfere with the rear fan. So by doing that, it kind of affects what you can set up. So just keep that in mind. It kind of affects the way things are oriented inside of the case too. Then I went ahead and installed the IO port on the, uh, the back of the PC. I had a problem with this the last build I did back five, almost five to six years ago and I still had a problem with that in this build. When I popped in those metal, the little IO shield, I had literally thought I, I didn't do it correctly the first time. You know, I heard the pop, I heard the sound, I said, okay, we're good, we are, we are doing this. But I soon realized that when you popped it in, I, it didn't look flush. It, it just didn't look like it worked correctly, so I took it out. And then I took it back in again and I did a couple of times and I almost got really frustrated that it wasn't working. And there's times when things aren't working for me and I just, you know, put a lot of force. Sorry about that. I put a lot of force to get something to work correctly and that's not always a good idea. So just keep that in mind. Once I got that in there, I just put the motherboard in. It's really nice, this case, the 450D has a the stands already installed you know normally in some cases you got to install the stands yourself so that the motherboard sits above the floor of the case and and there's actually even a little centerpiece that sits nicely with motherboards too inside of the case as well to make things a lot easier for you so really like the design of that and made life a lot easier okay the the power supply really was a big pain in the ass um, when you first get the, uh, when the, the power supply, it comes in a really great packaging. It looks all fancy. You get all these nice cables and what you do is you end up picking out all the power cables that you need. There's the motherboard cable, the CPU cable, the graphics card cable, uh, and then the SATA port cables that you need for your build. So you just take all the cables that you actually need because you don't want all of those cables because they're going to get all over the place in your build. But when it came to actually putting the, C the power supply in, was just, I had issues installing it. And I, don't, I can't for the life of me understand why it was so difficult. So I took a pause there and I went ahead and just installed the CPU cooler. So the little, that little part that actually attaches onto the CPU, I went ahead and did that instead because I wasn't too sure about the power supply situation. And I wanted to make sure that was already bolted in. It was really simple. You just kind of mount it in place and you put in those thumb screws, which are just big and easy to obviously again, use your thumbs to screw on there, which was fantastic. So when I did get those cables plugged in, there were just like kind of weird cables kind of hanging around with the CPU cooler. So I just kind of tried to tuck them in somewhere and you know, I just did my best. One thing you need to do that I didn't do was install the M.2 drive that I got. And I was an idiot for not plugging that into the motherboard first before the, the, the motherboard went into the case before I installed everything else. 
So that was a bit of a pain. And everyone that was posting this online was is absolutely right. You need to literally have a long screwdriver, a pretty thin one that has maybe a magnetic end to it because that screw is really finicky and tiny. You can literally lose it. And it's, I don't know why they would design it in such a way, but they did. So uh, I, I get why, probably because, you know, you want to kind of low profile, but I, I almost lost that little tiny screw at some point. Once everything was kind of settled, I went ahead and installed the graphics card, which is really easy. Just remove the back plates, remove two of them, just kind of figure out where you need to remove them first and just pop in the graphics card and just make sure you hear a little click to make sure it's secured in there. And, um, and that's it. Plug in the power cables into your GPU and install all the other IO cables or whatever you need for the front panel, USB 3.0, um, and all the other little knickknacks that go into your motherboard. Once I got all that settled, I popped in the Windows 10 USB that I made and I had to go into the BIOS and change the boot order to get it to boot properly into the USB. But once I did that, it worked and it recognized the NVMe drive, the Samsung 950 Pro. The only thing to keep in mind is when you do this process, after you install Windows, you need to go back into the BIOS and switch the boot order to the NVMe or the M.2 drive to make sure that the system boots into that and not to your USB drive to begin with. Well, there you go, guys. That is part two in this three-part series going over the build. Uh, the next video is going to be some benchmarks. I'm not sure what kind of benchmarks I'm going to do. Probably just the uh, hard disk drives, some performance benchmarks when it comes to rendering and editing on a timeline and just giving you some feedback. I already went ahead and edited the first part of the video on the new machine. And I am going to tell you it runs, it runs buttery smooth. It, it really does. And we're going to talk about that in the benchmarks. Once again, I'm your host, That One Camera Guy. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one. Bye. Now, before I actually, before I completely go, if you like this video, please share it and hit the like button. The more viewers I get on it, the better coverage more people will see it and they'll get out there more. If you like and enjoy the videos I'm producing on my channel, go ahead and maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. As far as episode three, it's gonna pop up somewhere here, maybe on the little eye icon that pops up. And finally, uh, as far as the products go that were used, just check the links down below to see and, and find them and get them to your heart's content. I think that's it. I'm done.